So I'm looking today um, how to glue down these flaps and it occurred uh, on coming over the side of the tire and it occurred to me as I'm looking at this that it's very uneven all through here and what I'm really concerned about is making sure that the rubber sticks on the surface of the wheel and it occurred to me well why don't I just cut off this excess that's floating out here So I have a, an X-Acto knife here, you know, one of these little cheapy knives, but I've extended the blade out very far where it's a very fresh blade, and I find I can cut this rubber really easily. <clears throat> and in fact, I've already done um, the other side, so I know the technique works. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding the blade tight against the wheel, And then once I have a little piece cut, I can just spin the wheel and with the blade up tight against the surface of the wheel, it's getting a perfectly clean edge all around. And one thing I have noticed as I have been looking at this wheel is that all kinds of sawdust gets trapped in here so this will eliminate a couple problems. The flapping of the rubber, the excess rubber, and the capture of unwanted sawdust. There we are, done. And then do the other side. Done. And just uh, to kind of give a little more illustration of why I think <clears throat> another problem that may have been caused by this rubber is looking inside the shroud uh, and the um, this part here with the right angle over here you can see where the rubber has been rubbing up against that uh, chute and in fact it's actually worn quite a bit of the chute away here this is just excess rubber flapping around from centrifugal force. I could see that as I was cutting uh, the log, that that rubber was flapping around. So eliminating the excess from the side of the wheel here should relieve that problem. Okay, so that's the wheel, excess rubber flapping taken care of. I have um, also bent the uh, blade guard on this far wheel over here it was a little bit of a problem. We were getting a little bit of, uh, the blade guard was a little close to the bottom of this wheel. Uh, so I bent it out a little bit, so that should take care of that. So we got that problem solved, that problem solved. I'll adjust these blade guides. Well, you can't see them just off camera here. But I got some blade guides right in here. This guy. I'm gonna adjust him when I get the new blade. Um, and that should take care of this whole end. So as I'm waiting for the bandsaw blades to arrive, courtesy of Amazon, I printed off a couple more uh, hose adapters or dust collection adapters that I'm gonna to use to kind of extend the hose a little bit through some PVC pipe and uh, provide a little better connectivity than what I currently have temporarily set up with some duct tape. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit while we're waiting. So these two fittings, this is a hose adapter that you've seen me use before. It goes on the end of the hose. Well, why I call it a hose adapter. And I printed a new part that'll fit into any standard PVC fitting. So it just slips in there nicely and uh, I'll kind of keep that in place with a bead of silicone all around the exterior of this fitting here. So put some silicone around there, then that can just slip in and that, I'm expecting that's going to be held in place tightly. If it's not, then I can put a little uh, screw uh, through the side here just to kind of keep it in place. So it's kind of neat that that little adapter will fit into any kind of fitting, whether it's an elbow or a straight connection or a T or a Y. So I'm looking that I'll probably be able to use this quite a bit. 
Anyway, the um, thing that I want to do at this point is take this adapter and put it into this fitting here and then put this, uh, my hose adapter, on the end of this hose so this can be uncoupled. Eventually, uh, I have another pair of those uh, couplings being printed and what will happen is that this hose will have a short hose that runs from here up to here onto the end of that pipe. And that pipe runs across the shop and drops in down behind the drill press and the band saw. And I can run the hose easily from there over to the table saw, which is kind of covered with material that's been milled. And it gets me much closer <coughs> to the work table sawmill uh, so that I can push the work table sawmill back uh, toward my big door there and give a little bit more room in the shop. I had to bring this whole work table sawmill closer this way just to get the vacuum or the dust collector to uh, be able to go that far. So a little bit of an extension in the works. Let me disconnect the uh, fitting that I've got over here currently held on with duct tape. So we'll get rid of this and we'll put <coughs> our new fitting on. So here's the adapter put in here. Now I didn't actually run silicone around this. Instead what I did, it's a snug fit. So I just put some electrical tape, you know, my carpenter's band-aid around that uh, fitting and then it went in very snugly. So until I have everything exactly in place, I'm just gonna leave that fitting as a pressure fit. That's typically what you do with PVC pipe and dust collectors anyway, just, they're just kind of pressure fit. So I'm gonna let that be. And um, I have just put the fitting on the end of this hose, and I'm about to put some hose clamps around that to hold that in place. And then that'll, uh, Come on here, like so, and keep that onto the dust collector. <clears throat> as soon as I get my other fittings printed, I'm gonna cut this hose and join it up with the pipe up here. So, <clears throat> just waiting for a couple fitting, couple more of these fittings to print. It's about 10 hours of printing to get those done. All right, let me get that hose clamp on and we'll wrap this one up. Okay, hose uh, mounted. Good. Now, the next little thing I've discovered on the um, blade guard is that I had a couple of joints here that the epoxy didn't seem to bond. So I first came across that one. Well, actually, I came across this one down here, and I put more epoxy on it. Then I came across this one, and I noticed that this one seems to be a little bit loose, too. So... I am going to go back to kind of plan B, which is I'm going to cut a strip of wood, uh, maybe some plywood, just in a band that goes all around here, and we'll screw that onto the blade guard just to kind of keep it in place. So let me go find a piece of wood and we'll get that ready. So there's our semicircle marked out, and snap of a finger, it magically becomes the piece we want. Okay, I'm not really one for video effects, but you know, I try. So that'll go on here. So your next question might be, but Dean, how are you going to attach that to the blade guard? And I would say, well, you're asking the right questions. Um, I'm going to use this kind of a screw here, a flathead bolt, or a flathead machine screw. Uh, however, the ones I have here are three quarters of an inch long and what I need is going to be one inch. So I'm going to run over to the uh, store, pick up a couple of those bolts, hopefully they have them, and then they will sit in. I'll be able to countersink them into the blade guard and run them up. And I'm expecting to do one per segment. Sorry, one per segment. Um, and I know that the epoxy is having some effect, though not complete, but at least one bolt here on each of these segments, and the reinforcement of this piece will help keep it all together. So I'll be back as soon as I have those uh, machine screws. Alrighty, I'm back. I got my number 10 one-inch screws, machine screws. 
Uh, so I'm <clears throat> going to be drilling a hole here and put one in, and I'm going to drill a hole over here and put the other one in, um, and then I'll come around and do the do the remainder. But I want to get two anchored uh, before I go too far. So be drilling that hole through there, drilling the hole through here. And I'm going to put in my countersink bit and try and come through the other way just to provide a little bit of purchase for that. and do a little countersink on this side. And I'm using this little extension here just so that I get um, a better, a little better access to that hole. I, I can't, uh, can't get through it. Although I'm thinking perhaps I should be drilling a hole here so I get access to that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna drill a hole here so I have full access. Now, the easiest way to do that is to go straight through the whole thing and then come back. Okay, we'll put a larger hole through there so I can get a screwdriver in. process has given me a lovely little countersink in here. Not sure if I can get that on the camera. Right here. Yeah. Hope you can see that countersink. And that lets the bolt or the machine screw sit in quite flush, not perfectly flush, but I'm just trying to get it as far away from the blade as possible. That's, that's the goal there. Just gonna get that reasonably snug. So because I have this bracket on here, I won't be able to drill the hole through from this side to access the machine screw. So I'm gonna take this bracket off and uh, we'll be in good shape. are very tight fitting bolts and holes. All right, we are clear.
advantage with that hole is I can get the screwdriver right in. This makes life a lot easier. Okay, that's two. So now I'm going to come back with my smaller bit and I'm just going to drill every one of these out. And then come through the uh, other side with the bigger bit. So I've got to do a little more of a production line now. sink. Apologize if I got the camera shaking there a little bit. around a little bit so you can get a slightly better view of what I'm doing. All right, there we are. So got that little bit of reinforcing on. Now I'm this is an incredibly strong material, what I'm putting here, but it's just enough to keep these, um, the curved bits, you know, these segments from splitting apart. If it turns out that even this breaks apart, I'll, I'll replace it with a strip of metal. All right, we'll put the bracket back on. All right, and there is <coughs> our blade guard, curved end, reinforced. Got a couple extra holes here, of course. Now they can get some dust flowing out of them, but uh, <laughs> there's not much dust down at this end, fortunately. Okay, I think our blade guard is ready to go back on as soon as we get a blade. Clean up this mess. And over to our dust collector. I've got a new piece printed, uh, another hose adapter. I got another fitting adapter on the 3D printer right now. That'll be finished up later tonight. Um, I ran out of magnets, so I've ordered some more magnets. They'll come, they should come same time as the, as the saw blades. So we'll get all that stuff put together as well. We're coming along. I'll give you an update a little later. Thanks for watching.